All right, folks, I'm going to do my 2019-2020 Oakland Raiders season predictions video here. Where I'm going to guesstimate here the uh, projecting starter roster on offense and defense and also very quickly go through uh, the team's uh, schedule to kind of give you my estimate for the overall win-loss record. And, you know, it's a good thing nothing eventful happened over the weekend. You know, nothing like perhaps, you know, a star player acquisition over the offseason being abruptly cut, you know, one day before opening day and, being traded to uh, the Patriots, I'm glad that didn't happen. If that did, the Raiders season would be sunk like a vessel. But uh, that didn't happen. Okay, I'm getting a message that says that exactly that did happen. All right, well, let's let's do what we can. You know, this is one of those years where I can't even like pretend to say I'm that entirely enthusiastic. I mean, after going seven and nine and five and eleven and four and twelve, I mean. You know, every year I try to convince myself the Raiders are going to do well. But this year, like, I can't even have the fantasy. You know, I think going, you know, 7-9 and nine or 8-8 eight and eight at this point would be a, a grand illusion. But you never know. You know, football is all about faith. It's not about common sense or, or reason or logic or any of the other things that make modernity work. It's all about just believing against all odds. And to, if the Raiders are going to do anything this year, we're going to have to believe and a lot of things that aren't realistic, but uh, neither here nor there. All right, let's take a look at the projected starters on offense. Now, I don't know if you noticed this, but over there on uh, wide receiver number one, if I was going to record this video on Friday like I originally intended, it would be an entirely different, you know, ambiance. But because I waited until the day of the first Raiders game of the year, obviously, Antonio Brown will not be playing for the Raiders this season. He will not be playing for the Raiders at all. In fact, you can probably go on the NFL.com website and get one of his jerseys for like $29 now because things happened. So, with Antonio Brown off the roster, I think it obviously makes Tyrell Williams the number one receiver for the Raiders. I think I move Hunter Renfro, the, uh, the rookie from Clemson over there, to slot number two. And those guys are very good, but the third receiver slot, okay, here are our four picks to choose from. J.J. Nelson, who's all right. And then Ryan Grant, Marcel Atman, and Rico Granford, who are, are not Granford, Gafford, who are uh, unproven prospects to say the least. Um, in fact, I think uh, two of those guys are actually practice squad call ups. So you're going to have two really good receivers and then probably one really ho hum receiver. So, you know, if Antonio Brown would have been on there, I think this would have been one of the best receiving units in the NFL. Derek Carpa would have had some really good numbers, but without him, oh, we're taking our chances. So overall, I'm going to give uh, the receiver lineup a C plus. It's good. I think it's a little bit better than people are expecting, even without Antonio Brown, but certainly not enough to, I think, give him too much depth heading down the line. Okay, offensive line. Uh, Colt Miller at left tackle. Richie Incognito at left guard. Of course, he is suspended, so that means we're likely going to have Jordan Devy or Jonathan Cooper filling in for that slot. So, uh, yeah, I think we're going to miss uh, Osmolay. We're going to miss him a lot this year. Uh, so the left side looks really, really dangerously weak, and that gives me a lot of concern considering how many times Derek Carr was sacked last year. But I guess the positive thing is there, you know, the rest of the offensive line looks really good. Rodney Hudson, probably one of the best centers in the league. Gabe Jackson at right guard, who is very, very good. Uh, Trent Brown, one of the best tackles, coming in at right tackle for us this year. And uh, as far as the tight end situation, you know, we got some pretty good characters there. We got Darren Waller, who I think is uh, definitely has the potential to be a, a very, you know, top 10 impact player at that position. And Derek Carrier, he got a lot of uh, touchdowns last year. I think we're going to be seeing more Derek Carr to Derek Carrier this year. That uh, connection should be going pretty strong. So overall, offensive line, I'm going to give it a B minus. You know, the, the right side looks good. Can't claim it the center, but the left side gives me a lot of cause for concern. If we're looking at tight ends in a standalone position, I'd probably give it about a, I'll give it a B minus as well, just because there, there are some gaps. Darren Waller, Derek Carr are good, but you want to have one more guy just in case things go downhill. All right, take a look at the quarterback situation, Derek Carr. And like I said earlier in the year, you know, if Antonio Brown was a starter for the Raiders, I think Derek Carr would have been without a question, without a doubt, a potential MVP caliber candidate quarterback. Uh, without him though, Probably not. Just being realistic with you guys, not having that one reliable guy to throw to, I just don't see his numbers being that good. I mean, they'll be better than they were last year, but probably not on par with 2016. But I do see him rebounding mildly in the year ahead. Uh, so Derek Carr hopefully stays healthy because we need him to stay healthy for God's sake. 
Uh, then the rest of the quarterback crew, we got Nathan Peterman on injured reserve, Mike Glennon, and Deshaun Kaiser. Not really a big fan of any of those guys, so Derek Carr needs to be taking his vitamins, saying his prayers. As a collective fan base, we should be doing the exact same thing because if he goes down, forget it. This season is done. D-O-N-E. Over. Don't even think about it. All right. And here's another thing. With uh, the receiver situation with Antonio Brown, something I think is going to be very, very important to look at for the Raiders moving forward this season is the running back situation. I think because you don't have Antonio Brown, we're going to see more reliance on the rushing game. And it actually might prove well for the Raiders. They might actually put them in a better situation than they would have if they were stuck to the uh, aerial West Coast offense. And I bring that up because I am a believer in Josh Jacobs. I watch this kid Alabama. He is a very, very talented running back. And I think, you know, he very well could be the uh, offensive rookie of the year. He's going to put up some pretty big numbers. You know, he could be uh, garnering uh, close to 2,000 yards if things come out right. So here's hoping for that. And then, of course, you got the rest of the guys, Jalen Richard, DeAndre Washington, who have been consistent, maybe not as good as we want them to be, but certainly decent enough. So with Josh Jacobs coming in and playing the way I think he's going to play, plus a solid backup with Richard and Washington, and we got, uh, who is that, uh, Demera Crockett. I believe it's from Miami Voss. You put all those together, I think we've got a very solid, better than average, certainly not subpar running back committee. I'm going to give that an overall grade a B. And for quarterback, I'm going to give that a B minus, pending Derek Carr stays healthy. Derek Carr gets hurt, make it a D minus. Just that simple. Okay, special teams, real quick. We got uh, Daniel Carson's kicker. We got Dwayne Harris doing kick return, punt return duties. AJ Cole's a punter. And if you know any of these people, um, good luck because you must be really, really hardcore about this. Okay, okay, my dog's now looking at me. He wants to go outside. He's barking. Okay, quickly, defense, defense. We're gonna go through this one real quick. Uh, taking a look at the uh, the front uh, six here, or front five. My bad. Front four. Okay, because we're doing a four three this year. All right, so we got uh, a defensive end. We got Arden Key, defensive tackle Jonathan Hankins, Mo Hurst, other defensive tackle uh, Cleveland Farrell at the other defensive end. Yeah, none of these guys are really jumping out to me as like defensive all-team first starters. Although Pharrell, I've seen him in Clemson, he's very good. Uh, he's definitely the best out of the four. Looking at our cornerbacks, we got Gary on Conley, who has not lived at the hop. We got Lamarcus Joyner, who you know could be good, but could also be bad. And Daryl Worley, who's just kind of there. And look at the backups here. Not a lot of good stuff going for us. We've got guys like you know Nick Nelson and Max Crosby. Uh, who else? P.J. Hall. Uh, Quentin Bell, guys you've never heard of before, who will step in if one of these guys gets hurt. So looking at you know from a holistic uh, perspective, just the starters I think are C C plus at absolute best. But taking a look at everybody else you got on the roster, this is probably like a, a C overall front seven, just or front four. My bad, just not not that optimistic at all. Okay, and then looking at the backfield, we've got, uh, let's see, Nicholas Morrow starting as an interior lineman. We're going to have Vontaze Burfecht as a middle linebacker. Uh, Tahir Whitehead is the other guy on this side of the field. This one's a little bit better. i got a little bit more faith in that side. I would give that section of the uh, defense uh, a B-minus score. It should be pretty productive. And, of course, free safety and strong safety, we've got Carl Joseph, who I don't think he's lived at the high, taking in Jonathan Abram, who uh, isn't that good either, so... Raiders' story the last, uh, what is it, 18 years now is just them being torched in the secondary. I don't expect that to change too much. I think they're going to be beat up on the long ball all season long. So I'm going to give that one a score of a C-. minus. So the offense, not that good. The defense looking even worse. So, yeah. Overall grade, defense, special teams, especially if they really give us a score too because I'm not really familiar with any of those guys. So it'd be obvious charlatan to really say too much of anything about that. But um, overall, I'd give the Raiders a grade of a C. I mean, this don't have all the moving pieces. But like I said, you never know. You never know in the NFL. Crazy things can happen. But just looking at the players we have now, unless you know they really come in their own and give it 110%, I'm just not uh, too optimistic, just being honest with you, fam. All right, so taking a look at the uh, regular season schedule here. Um Looking pretty tough. I mean, a lot of these teams, I don't think there's really a, a scrub on the roster. I mean, realistically, I mean, the Raiders could go in 16. I mean, that's without question a possibility, you know. I don't think that's going to happen. But if it's going to be a worst-case scenario, absolute worst-case scenario, just being honest with you, fam, they could lose every single game this year. That's a possibility. Now, I'm a little bit more optimistic and give you my 
best uh, outcome possible here in the next one, but just look at this one. I mean, it's a murderer's row. I mean, I'm trying to think like who like is the absolute worst team they're going to play this year. You know, probably you know what the Jets or um, Indianapolis, and they're still going to give them a challenge. Those are not gimmies. So just take a look at that and get ready to cry because things could get real bad in a real hurry. Hopefully they won't. So the negative is I could lose every single game of the year. That's a pretty big negative. So what's a positive? What's uh, the best hopeful outcome for us? All right, here's what I got. I think at the absolute best, if things go well and the Raiders, you know, you know, exceed and they click at all positions and they're firing on all cylinders, I think they can go 11 and five. I think the only uh, games on the schedule that are absolute guaranteed losses, week two, hosting Kansas City uh, at Minnesota, at Green Bay because the Raiders can't beat the Packers for some reason. I think they're going to lose at least one game against the Chargers, and they're going to lose one against Tennessee because that's just kind of the way it shakes out. Now, like I said, this is very, very rosy. This is the best absolute possible scenario. They're going to go 11-5. and five. But like I said, you know, once again, all these games, they could be losses. So 0-16, and 11-5, I think, is the most realistic range to work with. So you kind of go for in the middle... I mean, I think probably the the smart money would be to say they're probably going to go up like 5 and 11, 6 and 10. But uh, I'm going to shoot for the upper range. I think they should be, hopefully, they will at least be in playoff contention most of the year. So if I had to go, I would say they'd probably be about 7, 9, 8 and 8. It's going to feel like 2010, 2011 up in here. If they had Antonio Brown, I'd probably give him a winning record, but without him, Unless they get somebody really, really good, you know, in the offseason, they get like Calvin Johnson with like cybernetic body parts to come into retirement and play for them. You know, I think it's going to hurt them. But like I said, you never know. I mean, that run game with Josh Jacobs could be that good. You know, Hunter Renfro could be that good. You know, we could be seeing a, you know, a real resurgence there. You know, you never know. So 0-16 to 16 seems a lot likelier than 11-5 at this point. But that's why you watch the game. You got to have faith. You can't be reasonable. And uh, hopefully lots of bad things happen to Patriots and Antonio Brown regardless. Which leads me to one final prediction, kind of only tangentially related to the Raiders, but it does involve Antonio Brown and the Patriots. Final prediction is that uh, before the season is over, Antonio Brown will be arrested for stealing Tom Brady's silverware. It's going to happen. If you're going to let Antonio Brown stay at your house, two things are going to happen. Giselle's going to get pregnant or your silverware is going to get stolen and pawned. So just doing it out there. I'm giving you the story early. It's going to happen. It's going to be a next huge scandal, and Bill Belichick will probably uh, do something racist. Hopefully there's a lot of drama coming from this, you know, because, you know, the Patriots owner is going to spas, and he's human trafficking, and Tom Brady's, you know, kissing old dudes on the mouth, and Antonio Brown's going to be over there with Giselle while Tom Brady's, you know, in the shower. Lots of good things could happen. So even if the Raiders have a crappy year, which seems more likely than not like at this point, at least we can all take Sucre and watching, you know, the Patriots dynasty just collapse from the inside out, thanks to uh, Virus 84. All right, that's all I got for you. Those are my predictions. Feel free to run with them. I know it's a very dour, you know, sort of uh, unsentimental look at the season ahead, but you know what? Sometimes you got to be honest with yourselves because we've tried everything else. Might as well try being honest as a Raiders fan. All right, keep the faith. I'll be watching the game tonight. Hopefully, uh, my predictions will be mostly wrong and we'll be good this year. But if not, you know what? I'd still rather be a losing Raiders fan than a winning Chiefs fan any day. So all I can say on top of that is, go Raiders.